In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom drawn controls in .NET MAUI and really make them look, I guess, official. There's a few different ways to do this, but this method I'm going to show you today, I think is probably my favorite so far because it really makes it look encapsulated and you can create custom properties. You can make it look however you want because it's just a drawn control. So we're going to talk about that. And with that, let's dig in. Okay, so the custom control that I created for my app that I'm writing is just this circular button right here. You know, you can you can make a button with fairly rounded corners, but I didn't see a way with the built in button class to actually make a completely circular one. But anyways, unimportant. Really, the important part is I wanted to customize it myself. And so I did it this way. This is a drawn control, meaning I'm actually using the Maui.graphics library to draw the control itself using, you know, Maui graphics. And then I'm hosting that drawn canvas inside of a class. And this class is called circular button. The way you call it is pretty simple. You first, you'll create a class called your name and you know, you have to give it an XML namespace. So really the only way to differentiate custom ones versus built in ones is this namespace. And you'll notice, you know, a lot of these, these are pretty basic properties that are already on a class, high request, width request, margin, all that. Uh, but there's some new ones that you, you've probably never seen, button color, image, that's that's built in, but sort of not, I'll show you in a second. And there's other ones as well, but button color. So I, I guess the only reason I point this out is that you can create fully customizable controls because you can, you can create custom properties, you can draw it the way you want, completely customizable. So I'm going to show you how I did that. But this is how you you call it. Uh, you'll notice I have a tap gesture recognizer here in the same way you would with a lot of other classes. And you're just calling it just like you would. And you may think, wow, okay, that might be a lot of work. But actually, it's not too bad. Because what you do, and we'll just dig right into the code is you uh, inherit from a different, you know, built in control built in view, whatever. Since I'm doing a drawn control, I thought it made the most sense to do a graphics view and to inherit from graphics view. So let me get this out of the way real quick. So I, I created circular button class. I inherited from graphics view, which gives me access to, you know, the built in stuff. So here's a drawable, you know, I'm just, I'm just using the graphics view drawable. Uh, and that's actually what's displaying inside of the circular button view. But then we've got all these other, these, all these other properties. So the way you do custom properties inside of your control is there's it's a couple step process. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a static bindable property for that that property. And the way you do that is you create it usually by kind of convention. The name is the name of the thing plus the word property and you equals bindable property dot create. And this is a method inside of bindable property that basically you know, you, you give it, it has a ton of different things you can pass it, but I'll show you the ones I've been using, which probably covers 90% of cases. So the way you do that is bindable property dot create, and then you pass it the name of the property, you pass it its type, you pass it what the owner class is in our case, that circular button. And then you can pass it different other parameters. For instance, I have a property changed parameter. So when the property changed event gets triggered, this method will be called on button color changed. And that's it. And so that builds the static property out here. OK, so we've got our, our bindable property, but how do you get and set it? Well, what you do is you use a public property and, you know, usually the name of the property you're creating and it'll have a get and a set. And you'll use this method called get value and set value. And it does what it sounds like. It gets the value of what's inside of that static property and set value will set it for the instance of the class you've got and note you're going to have to cast it, etc. to the value you want. OK, and yeah, I did that for a button color. I did that for an image and I did that for this is visible property is visible is actually one that is already inside of view view. I think it is view dot is visible. And uh, so graphics, you already had it, but I'm overriding it. And so I did that with the new keyword just like you would. Uh, the reason I did that is because I wanted to hook in here and do something specific when the on the invisible changed. Okay, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, so so just to recap, you create a new bindable property, uh, and you use that use the bindable property dot create method, and then you pass it these parameters. Again, there's a ton of parameters you can pass it. But in my case, this and probably most cases, this handles it. I did that for is visible image and button color, then you create public accessor properties with a get and a set in them. And then you'll 
you know, as we specified down here, you also have a method that is called when property change event happens. And so in those, you can kind of do whatever you want. I will note they are static. So you have to, you know, you can't do this dot, etc. They don't belong to an instance of an object. They belong to the bindable object that gets passed to them, which is why this bindable object is passed into these methods. So just note that it, it kind of changes the way you write the code. So for instance, when I change the color of a button, I'm going to grab the circular button we're in itself, which is called a control. And I'm just doing that by casting from the bindable that gets sent. I'm going to grab the button color that got set and then I'm going to grab the drawable from control.drawable and then I'm going to change the button color inside the drawable and then I'm going to invalidate which is forcing it to redraw. So anytime a user, or not a user, but anytime something goes in and changes the button color, this is going to trigger and it's going to force it to redraw. You have to do this because you're drawing this control and that drawn control is not going to respond to, to changes unless you tell it to. So any property that you want your drawn control to respond to, to redraw itself, you're going to have to hook it in this way, you know, hook it into your control from from a method that is bound to on property changed. So for instance, let's say you had one of those linear meter that I showed in a, a few videos ago and you wanted it bound, you wanted its fill value bound to something in a view model, you would have to hook that into one of these methods and change the value as that bindable property gets changed in the view model. You would have to write the method itself to then recalculate and redraw it. Hopefully that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, honestly, that's it's pretty straightforward from there. The other the only other thing to mention is on invisible change. The reason I overwrote it is because I wanted to do a custom animation. And when instead of doing the animation inside of all the code behind for the views, I just moved it into here. And that way, anytime is visible changes, I'm going to do an animation instead of just making it invisible. So that's that's kind of the nice thing about these custom controls is you can really encapsulate the code itself into one place instead of rewriting this animation everywhere. I wanted to use a new button, for instance, a new circular button. So that's kind of nice. And, and on a similar note, you know, that that's something in the on property changed for is visible property. But I also just have a public method on this control called bounce on press async. And uh, as you might imagine, it's doing an animation and it's when it's pressed. So instead of, you know, in again, in every view code behind that's using these circular buttons, instead of creating writing this code to do this animation, I put it in a method inside the control and then I can just call that in the method it's, or in the, um, in the code behind for the view model itself. So that's a, that's a, again, a nicer way to not repeat yourself. So that's one of the nice things about writing these custom controls. And yeah, so that kind of covers that part of it, the actual control class itself. Again, the way you use these, is you would need to pull in your namespace. You know, I'm gonna use avid.controls namespace. So I pulled it into my XML namespace, called it controls. And then I come in here and I wanna make a new one. I just write controls colon circular button. And then it has all the properties of the graphics view would have, but it also has any of the new ones I created. So button color there, and I've got it responding to a dynamic resource tertiary. And, and again, just because graphics view will take a gesture recognizer, so will mine now because I just inherited it, you know, standing on the shoulders of the graphics view giant. Since I was doing a drawn control, I thought it made the most sense to do a graphics view. If you weren't doing a, a drawn control, you probably could do a different one. Like if you wanted to do, I don't know, a, a button, but it had a very specific thing about it, a new property or something. I don't know. There, there Again, there's other ways to do all this stuff. You can do this with handlers. You can do it with, you know, you can change the things all kinds of different ways. But in the case that you want to create a custom control because you don't like the way certain one behaves or something like that, you can do it this way. But I would imagine most cases you do this, you're going to do a drawn control because otherwise it would look a lot like the built-in ones. I think a lot of the time I'm just going to be inheriting graphics view just because it makes the most sense. The only other thing I wanted to mention about all that is when you create custom properties, sometimes you're gonna need to convert between them. So, for, or sorry, between the types that are used. When you send in a type to a property, you know, for instance, this right here, dynamic resource tertiary. Tertiary is a color. It's a it's in my colors.xml file, uh, but it's converted to a string. So if you notice if I mouse over, it says string, but my button color property is a color. So how are we converting from string to color? Well, it turns out in this case, it's already kind of built in. But if you were doing this with types that you created or something like that, you may need a, a converter. And I, I wrote, I just threw together a very 
exploratory one because I was messing around with them. And this one is string to bool, which again, I think is already built in. The main reason I wanted to bring this up was just to tell you that this is a thing you can do. You can create converter classes, which then you can call as part of this, this binding here, this using this kind of curly brace syntax, and then it knows how it should convert, how it convert certain types. So like string to bool, there, I believe there's always a convert method and a convert back method, which does what you would think they would do. So just to know that value converters are a thing, I value converter uh, is a thing. So if you need to know more about that because the custom control you're doing involves custom types, then I would recommend looking into value converters so you can see how you need to write them. And lastly, really the only other thing I wanted to mention about all this was there's a few gotchas. So for instance, I believe at one point I did not have this, these bindable properties as static. And what that meant, obviously that meant my bindable property was instance of, or was part of the instance of the object. I kept getting weird behavior because of that. For instance, in this button color, when I used dynamic resource, it would be like, hey, we can't convert those types between string to color. And I was like, okay, do I need to write a value converter? What's going on here? It turns out I, for whatever reason, because it was not static, it was an instance of the object itself. It didn't know how to handle the conversion, but the second I made that bindable property static, it did know how to handle it. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on there. I would have to dig in a little bit to understand, but dynamic resource and static resource do operate differently as mentioned in the last video. So I'm sure there's some kind of built-in converter since they're already converting colors to strings and back and forth all, all over the place anyways. Uh, but I did want to mention that just if you're getting weird behavior, make sure you've got your bindable properties as static. Make sure you've got your, uh, these have to be static as well because they're called in here. So something to think about. It, it works a little strangely, at least in my brain, why a property that is sort of an instance of my object is static, but it's not, it's not an instance of my object. It's an overall property, but then this is an instance of my object. I don't know, a at least in my brain, it didn't make a ton of sense. So I just wanted to point that out. But generally I think that's the strat is static bindable property. These are instances of your object and these are also static, the on property changed methods. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how you do them. I think it's really, it's a nice way to kind of encapsulate, like I said, the, that behavior inside of its own class and create these customized controls that you can do literally whatever you want with. I mean, you know, the, the thing I did was pretty basic just to mention, I mean, you know, we talked about this in like the last like three videos, but the drawable itself is just a straightforward eye drawable with values like you would do and you draw a circle and you do a lot of the math for a circle. I'm doing an image. That's what the plus sign comes from. That's a customizable thing. So if, like for instance, if I click into here, that's an X, that's a check mark, whatever. And I'm doing that with this code here. I'll just mention real quick that the I image kind of framework is not implemented on Windows, the platform image stuff. So you have to do it differently if you're going to be producing an app for Windows. But if we're doing Android and iOS, which is the other stuff I'm working on, then it works fine. Yeah, that's basically drawable. You could you could do anything you can draw in Maui.graphics. You could do a custom control for now. So it's pretty cool. Just to show you the behavior real quick. Um, I you know we looked at the animations I added. So now when I click these uh, theme buttons, this since these are those custom circular buttons, they kind of pop a little bit, which I like. I think it's it's good to give that user feedback that they actually click something. So you got a little bouncy animation. Uh, same thing here. So when I click that, it bounces. When I click the X, it bounces, etc. If I go into here. Uh, I also added a little bounce on the frames themselves, which I think does help as a user feedback thing. But yeah, you can click that button and it bounces. Kind of cool. So, and again, all that, that logic is encapsulated inside of my circular button control, which is nice because if I ever wanted to, if I didn't like the way it bounced, I could change it, you know, whatever. And you can always still do these things inside the code behind for views too. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, but it's just nice to put all that code inside of its own custom method. So uh, if you would like to see any of this code, we obviously went through it kind of fast, but if you'd like to see it and really, you know, copy it, whatever you want to do, the code for this is in the GitHub down below. So always feel free to check that out. And if for instance, you need more help doing the drawable part of the con custom controls, I think for the most part, everything else is, is pretty straightforward. You just add on properties, properties. But if you don't know how you want to design the drawable itself, I've got two videos specifically about Maui.graphics and that libraries that I think will probably help you out. So those should be on your screen right now. And yeah, other than that, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.